share my screen. All right, so yesterday we ended, after we did our introduction to graphs, we ended talking about the breadth first search and the depth first search, and you were later asked in your independent project to go implement a lot more involving graphs and the BFS, the DFS, the DFS, some recursive solutions. So just a, a question to throw out to see what people say. You were asked to do a depth first search recursive. Why can't you do the breadth first search recursive? Not a trick question. You can't do breadth first recursive. Why is that the case? Kind of think of the logic of breadth first and how it works versus how depth first works. Anybody? Why can't you do breadth first search recursively? Think of how breadth first search moves versus how depth first search moves and how when you're moving down a tree, moving, moving down your levels like a tree branching out in recursive code, that's possible. But why wouldn't a BFS be possible? I said Tico typing. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Tico? Why can't you do a breadth first search recursively? Anybody else is welcome to type as well. <clears throat> Why can't you? Is it because you're already searching through each node of the tree at each level? So Tico says, is it because you've already searched through each node of the tree at each level, so if you recurse, you'll hit a node you've already visited? And Jawad says, because once it's found the target, it's already tried all other options. The, the, you, can, you can dive a lot into this, but what I'm coming to see what Tony's typing real quick, and then I'll... person base case needs to be defined at the leaf node. So what I was thinking, if you just look at, if you think about a simple tree, like we were looking at yesterday, and think about when you're doing things recursively, and, and like I said, it's uh, when you think about recursion, you think about branching down, so you're able to do two, and then we're gonna look at, at fourth, at number four recursively, and we keep looking down recursively, uh, that's indeed possible, but when we're moving in this direction, there's no way to make a recursive call here because you, there's nothing to make a recursive call on here because we're not moving down. We have to cover all of the neighbors of one, then all of the neighbors of two and three, then all the neighbors of four, five, six, and seven. So where we have something further down the tree to recursively call this function on, in the case of a breadth first search, there's nothing recursive that can be called. And also by the very nature that breadth first search works, it's had a recursive call would, would, if you somehow could implement it, a recursive call and a breadth first search would knock out the whole idea that it's typical, it's, it's, it's able to find the shortest path in an unweighted graph when you're looking for point A to point B. Let's see, recurse, let's see what Tico's typing real quick. And because you don't want to keep moving down until everything has been covered and we can't call, see, Tico said, so the fact that BFS moves across each level, across being a relative term, um, keep in mind 
make that clear to everyone that's across and down is is very much a relative and a an academic type term because there's no real direction or anything to these but in the typical graphic representation of them you're saying the fact that bfs moves across each level versus down each branch like in dfs that already contradicts the direction that recursion moves in yes you could think of it that way that like I said, you have one, so you can make a recursive call on two, then you can make a recursive call on four, and you can make a recursive call and then reach eight, but you can't make a recursive call moving this. There's no way to get the neighbors of three by making a recursive call of any sort on two. Does that make sense? And if there, you can't get the neighbors of six for making any sort of recursive call on node five. Remember, the whole goal is to get all the neighbors, and to get all the neighbors, and then to get all the neighbors, whereas this just keeps looking at the neighbor of the neighbor of the neighbor of the neighbor. Does that make sense? If, any, if that doesn't make sense to anybody, I'll try to explain it a little bit better. This is always one of those ones that a lot of times it's that aha moment that your head gets wrapped around it, but it's sometimes kind of tricky to think through. And because we didn't have a lot of extra time yesterday, I wanted to go through and cover this question in detail because I promised we would cover anything that we did not manage to cover yesterday. So I'm giving this a little bit more time today because we have the time to do it and it's important. I'll let Tico type. Would it be more accurate to say that recursion requires children neighboring nodes at lower level versus siblings? You know, Tico, I don't want to make a call on that because I don't know for 100% sure the answer on it. I, I like that. I'm not sure technically if that's a correct term. That would be something great to bring up in the Q&A with Brady later on, but I'd love to know the answer to that. But more accurate to say recursion requires children, neighboring nodes at lower levels versus siblings. I, I do like that, and I would, I would encourage that to be brought up to Brady. But like I said, just think about the very nature in which breadth first is moving and, and what it's doing. It's looking for the neighbors, and then it's looking for the neighbors of all these, and then it's going to look for the neighbors of all these, and it keeps moving. So there's no way to do that when we want this in order, and we've got to do two and three, and then we've got to do four, five, six, and seven. There's no way to make recursive calls here and be able to access this information over here. So I'm going to go ahead, now that we've talked about that, I'm going to go ahead and just implement, we were talking about the path, Kiko, I'll see what, yeah, no problem, absolutely, and I just don't want to say, I, I don't like, I don't like going with my gut intuition when I very well could be wrong, so yeah, I mean, it makes sense, I just don't know technically if there's some kind of a caveat to that, so I'm in the, in the name of not giving incorrect information or trying to reduce as much as possible, any incorrect information that I ever say. I just wanted to kind of pass that one along to Brady, but absolutely no problem. We also talked about path yesterday. So remember, if we go to the code that we were doing yesterday, we talked about the BFS and the path. And we mentioned that in a traversal, remember our, our, our whole goal in a traversal is to cover every node in this tree. Whether we do it breadth first, whether we do it depth first, we're traversing it, and by nature of the name, all we're doing is traversing it. A traversal in itself is not a search. A search is not a complete traversal unless the very last node you get to is the search target. So remember that those two are two different things. We talked about for a search, we were gonna keep looking with breadth first or depth first until we found that target value that we had in the input, the target vertex ID, so we get a starting ID. Remember, we can start any of these operations anywhere in a real world graph. We don't necessarily have this pretty single parent node at the top branching down like a tree like we covered in the past. That just gives a very convenient way of graphically representing this when we're going over the 101 of all this. But remember, we can start anywhere and we can traverse using a breadth first or a depth first using that same ideology. So hopefully you've seen that 
in your independent project. And if you haven't gotten to that, hopefully you will get to that and or that aha moment will happen here soon, which I promise eventually it will come. So for breadth first search, we went in and we actually pseudo coded it out at the end of the day yesterday. So if you weren't in there, hopefully you caught it on the video and I'll just talk through it um, as I implement it. But basically what we're looking to do is create an empty queue and on queue a path to the starting vertex ID. So remember here, instead of nodes, uh, you can think of it that we're storing paths each time and the paths are what we're putting into the queue and we keep building on the paths. And then as we're grabbing things off the queue, we grab the lead node on that path and say, is this the target if it hasn't been visited? If not visited, is it the target? If it's been visited, then keep moving. And that's how that works. So you're storing the actual path because why are you storing the path with a search? Somebody answer that. Why do we store the path with a search? I got time, so. Yeah, awesome, Carlos is typing. Usually you want the shortest path. Yeah, I mean, it does have to do with the path, but overall, no matter what, if you say we weren't necessarily looking for the shortest path, but no matter what, when you're doing a search, you have a target, and usually by convention, a search returns the path. So whether it's the shortest path or you're doing a depth first search and it's only maybe possibly the shortest path, um, we can talk a little bit about more about that more later, but you always are going to want to return that path. One other person typing, we'll see what they say. So we're going to go in here and we will say Q equals Q. And remember we have Q up here available. I'm still typing on what we had yesterday. So we have access to the Q here. No imports are necessary. And then using methods on that queue, we'll say on queue, and we will on queue the starting vertex ID. And then we will make a set to store visited vertices. So we can just say visited equals set. Let's see what somebody typed. You want a path because you are not simply traversing through the entire graph. You just want the path from starting vertex to de destination. Correct. You're trying to find the path to there. So whether it's the shortest, the longest, or whatever you're doing, you want to be able to, you know, the whole nature of, of other than just identifying, you know, a Boolean true false like it contains, uh, does what say in when we're searching a list but we want to be able to actually return that path because the very nature of these graphs is being able to traverse them. So we make a set, an empty set for visited, and then we will say, while the queue is not empty, so while queue.size, and the reason I'm just kind of walking through this is because I already gave out the pseudocode yesterday, and then we would actually dequeue the first path. So we can say path, equals yeah, Q. 79. Um, why is starting vertex ID inside of an array? Can you repeat? You, you kind of came across and I turned up my volume, but you can't. You... Oh, sorry. I was saying um, line 79. Why is starting vertex ID in an array? Because remember, Okay, remember that the starting vertex, yeah, it's a path, exactly, Carlos. Remember that we are storing paths this time. So later on down here, we're gonna actually be making a new path with a new list. And remember, you're calling it an, an array, but the list and array are one and the same in Python. And so because it's a path, we're storing that path in the list, and you'll see us in making the new, the new list for the path. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, good point, good question. Um, I'm sorry that slipped me when I was doing that. I didn't even think about doing that. 
and discussing why that was like that. But if there's any questions like that that have to do with the syntax itself, please feel free to ask. Um, we're here to learn Python as well, to be learning computer science and everything else we're doing. So the syntax does matter. And I usually try to be aware of everything in the syntax before I work through it. And or if I'm going to code it on the screen, obviously. Anything that I'm working through that's already been created or that I'm doing on my own, um, I try to keep up with the syntax. So definitely ask those questions if I don't comment on it. So we're going to DQ just using the, and we're going to grab the last vertex from the path. So we'll say V equals path minus one and here's another example of python terminology all this is doing is grabbing the last element of the list python terminology of grabbing the last element on the list if you put in negative two it would grab the second to last element negative three it would grab the third to last element eventually you'll get a list of vertices equal to the path that leads to your destination vertex exactly carlos exactly thank you so then if that vertex has not been visited, so remember instead of, instead of doing nodes, this time we're just loading paths and we're building up those paths, looking to see if, if this search is realized and if so, having that path to be able to return. Instead of returning nodes, we're simply returning paths that we're building up. So we're gonna grab that vertex at the very end of the path to see if it's been visited because that's still relevant here. Remember, no matter whether it's a traversal, a search, we're only gonna touch each node once with the required action. So if we've already been there and performed the actions that we're gonna do below on that, on that node, on that vertex, then we will simply bypass it. So we will say, If V not in visited. And then we're going to check if it's the target. We will say if V equals equals target dot value. What did we say target dot vertex ID? If that's the case, what would we do? If the vertex is equal to the target, yeah, return the path. And then if it's not, we will mark it as visited. So we will simply say visited dot add the vertex. So remember we created up here the visited set. And if it's not in visited, then we'll simply add it to visited. Then add a path to its neighbor to the back of the queue. So we'll say for next vert in self dot vertices. Remember, this is just simply when we're invoking and talking about self.vertices, we are going back to our actual graph that we defined here, the vertices. So let's say for next vert in self.vertices, and we will copy the path. So in copying the path, this is an important step. If you didn't happen to have problems yesterday, it's great. If you didn't come across it or if you realized why this was an important step, this is a very important step in, the, in actually copying the path in this manner right here. If you don't copy the path, you'll end up with problems later on in the code. So you can just say new path equals list path, and then append the neighbor to the back. So we'll say new path dot append next vert. And then we will on queue it 
U U E U E, the new path. Just as we do in a breath first search, this is the same as taking the node here. On the breath first search, and instead of the appending the node into the back or on queuing the node into the back of the queue, we are just on queuing the path. If none of this was met, what would be the last thing that we would do after this while loop executed? The while loop's gonna end when there's no more paths to explore. If we've been through all the paths and the check and see if fee was invisited and this never happened, so we never returned a path, what will we need to do right here? Somebody type. After the while loop, what would we, I mean, you don't have to tell me the exact code, just tell me theoretically what we would need to do right here. Uh, no, well, you're not gonna return the path because that would be saying that you found it. You'll just do something like return none. What did this do right here? Yeah, I mean, you could return negative one, destination vertex not found. I'm just saying return none. But yeah, what you're looking for, Brian, exactly on the, on the point, you're wanting to return something where the user will realize that this was not returned, whether it be a printed message, whether it be a, a negative one. Exactly. Uh, John, I have a question. Yeah. Well, when you're copying the um, new path, um, the way I had it was uh, for new path equals path dot copy. Is that kind of the same thing that you're doing? So you did right here. What did you do? Yeah, I wrote new path equals path dot copy. I want to say, did, did that... Did that pass the tests when you did that? It did, yeah. Okay, then that works. There are basically you have to create you have to create a new list. You can understand the problem if you simply took this old list and tried to recycle this old list through here. You can see the problems that would come with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. That you have to create. So whatever way that you're doing that that obviously created a new list. Um, I know, I think there were maybe some off ways that people tried to do it that ended up causing a problem, but as long as it passed the test, the idea here being in line 99 is that we do want to create, I just used the, the syntax here, just creating a list and using the path as that list. We're just putting the array, this is an array where basically we're saying create a list, a, a new list out of this array, the Python syntax. So the dot copy, obviously, I'm honestly not real familiar with that syntax, but obviously it functioned in the same way. Yeah, it's just the it, first thing that comes up when you search how to copy in Python, so. Yeah, I think maybe I got the, I don't know, I don't know why I, I got used to doing it this way, probably going back to Oh, what language would it have been? I really don't know, but yeah, that's fine, absolutely. And by the name of it, it makes sense that that would work. I just wanted to check to make sure the tests were, were passing so that that probably, that could have been an issue had they not been, so. Does that answer everything for you? Yeah, thank you. And no problem. And then, somebody tell me if we were gonna do a depth first search, what the difference would be. What would the difference be if we were gonna do a depth first search. Somebody type. Stack. Exactly, so we will just say here, and we will say stack. Remember, we've got the stack up here that we can access, so we don't need to import it. And then remember, we would just, what would we do to the, with the stack? 
what with the starting value. Somebody tell me what we would do, a general term in programming that we've been using a lot. What would we do with the stack with the starting vertex ID? Yeah, push it on there. <laughs> so we'll say s dot push. And once again, remember we have this starting vertex ID that we're using because <laughs> like salt and pepper. Um, because we're pushing a list, even if that list only has one element in it, if that's the starting vertex ID, we're going to end up pushing a list of all of those. So just to make that clear one more time, we'll make a visited again the same. I'm just kind of talking back through this, even though I could do like yesterday and just cut and paste and change a few things. We'll do the same and say while s dot size. I just wanted to talk through this one more time is greater than zero. And what would we do with the path as uh, long as the long as there was something still in the path? What would we? Same kind of question I asked for 107. Yeah, we're gonna pop it. S dot pop. And then we're going to access the leading vertex, whether that's in a single element or whether it is in something that has 100 elements in it. With this Python syntax, and we'll once again say if V not in visited. And then we will check if V equals target value if it is equal to the value we'll just return the path and if not we will add it see somebody just typed something and after we've added it we can do the same as we did above and say for next vert and self dot vertices of V and make a new path. Remember whatever syntax you do to do. We'll append the next vertice. And then what would be the last thing we would do here? What would we do with that new path that we just created? We made a new path, we appended the next vertex to it. What would we, the last thing that we would do with that? Yeah, we're gonna push it. So S dot push new path. And then once again, we'll return none outside the while loop. I'm gonna post this code and I'm gonna, I'm gonna post the complete. Version of it. So it's gonna have what was in there yesterday, but it'll have your queue, your stack the graph, the breadth first traversal, the depth first traversal, the breadth first search, and that should. I got a question on your, on your last one, on the um, depth, uh, breadth first search, is that what uh -huh. it is? Oh, depth first search? On the, you're talking about the depth that we just did, the DFS, the depth first search? Uh, yes. What's up? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you need to have, uh, I mean, this is just all me wondering, wouldn't you need to have the, the last for loop for next vert in self dot vertices B? Wouldn't you need to have that under the, the if B not even visited? Line, wouldn't you have need to have line one sixteen within the? Ah, uh, you're talking about the indentation that I messed up, right here. Uh, yeah. 
So you're, I think you're saying that I just had the indentation messed up. Is that what you were asking about? Uh, yes. Yes, that was completely a mistake on my behalf. Sometimes I throw in little mistakes to try to try to see if somebody will catch it or say something. Anything that has to do mostly with indentation or semicolons that start throwing all the little red exceptions, uh, please point them out because, as we know, indentation does matter in Python, and I wasn't paying attention when I was typing that. But absolutely, that needs to be within there. Yeah, don't worry. I, I, don't worry. I, I thought it was wrong in what I did previously. No, nope, absolutely not. It is. That's it. I think everything's lined up right. We have our graph. So we now you've got all of that. And we're going to take a quick break here just because we're kind of going into the second part of everything. But before we do that, I want to ask if anyone has any questions leading up to the break. What if you just wanted to find all paths from starting vertex to target vertex? If you wanted to find all of the paths you would simply, you would need to create, you would need to create another variable to store those paths in and just trying to think this through before I before I give an answer, you would need to create a separate variable to store all of the paths in and then you would just have to change your conditions that you're not simply going to return the path once we find the path, the first path. I tried, but was not able to do it. To be honest, I've never heard that asked before. Intuition tells me that I would make a variable for all those paths. The problem is, is depending on the nature of the graph, you could end up with a lot of paths to one different, to one different node, especially, like I say, we're not necessarily dealing with these pretty picture perfect graphs where everything's branching down and everything's branching down. We've got unidirectionals and bidirectionals and we've got different, let's see what people are typing here. I'm also gonna put this, here while we're talking about this and we'll make it anonymous. Two people are typing, so I'll let them type. But yeah, that's a good question. If you were wanting to find all the paths, what you would do. I, I, I mean, this maybe needs to be answered later, but the reason I asked is that that was the way I was trying to do um, the assignment, second assignment, um, which is, you know, is to be done later. You're talking about the, the, the today's uh, part two of the, the independent project and the graphs repo? Right, the ancestors. But that, that, that may need to be answered at some other time. Yeah, and I could, that's part of the challenge of that is solving that. Um, so Tony's saying sort of the same problem for me, which is when working with the adjacency list, I find it hard to use Q stack, sort of like storing a variable to keep track and using Q at the same time. Yeah, it's not the... These would be good points to be brought up with, with in the Q&A later on. These are great points and great questions, and some of them I think will be answered by the rest of the material that we're going through today and as you work through the independent project today without you know, giving away too much of the information. Some of it may be good questions for this afternoon in the Q&A. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Actually just posted what would return all the paths. So 
So everybody vote, 13 people, because so there's 12 people in here besides me. Are there any questions? Everybody jump on that poll real quick. We got the pseudocode now for finding all the paths. Any more questions? Yeah, now that I see what you're asking about finding, uh, the, now that I realize what your question is asking, that definitely is relative and take a look at that pseudocode and then try to code it out for yourself. But I'm sorry, I didn't, at first, I didn't quite realize what you were asking in the question, but. Yeah, no worries, thanks. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it was just, uh, I misunderstood at first, and now that I realize what you're asking, uh, definitely take a look at that pseudocode that Brian was nice enough to drop, and that is definitely how you'll go about doing it. So everybody take a break. It is about 52. Everybody come back at just on the hour, exactly. So that gives you eight minutes to do what you need to do, look everything over, come up with any questions, and then we'll go through kind of how to solve any graph problem, and we'll go through a word ladders problem for the last half. So everybody take a eight minute break, and I will see you back here. I'm gonna pause it in the meantime. Got about one minute left until we reach the hour, so. Give everybody a second to jump back in. Any questions, you can post them up here where you can add the questions or you can talk in the channel, type in the channel. Anything that came up over the break. Otherwise, we're gonna move on. Let me get started. Okay, so we are at the hour and we will get started again. Let me double check to make sure I've resumed the recording, which I have. I'm sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to talk in general real quick about how to solve any graph problem. This is a methodology that is similar to Polya's. It is something Brady has come up with and uh, it's fairly simple and it's really intuitive and it works. So keep this in mind as we're moving through these graph problems. Basically your first step is translate the problem into graph terminology. So translate the problem into graph terminology. So what does that mean? Remember, Polyas talks about the first step, identifying the problem, asking any clarifying questions. A lot of the people in the first step like to think, can I say it in my own words? Well, here, instead of saying, can we say it in our own words, we obviously need to understand the problem and be able to say it in our own words but put it in graph terminology. So somebody throw out some graph terminology that we talked about the other day. What would we be talking about here? Traverse the problem into graph terminology. What would some of that terminology be? We covered it in the beginning of yesterday. Transfer the problem into graph terminology. Vertices and edges. Yeah, that's definitely graph terminology. Um, I was thinking one type versus the other. So maybe like, depending on the relations of those ver vertices and edges, what would you maybe be looking at? Or what are some other things? All based on vertices and edges and or their relationships. Weight, yeah, is there weight? Weighted versus unweighted. Do those edges have a numerical 
uh, value to them or some other type of value that I guess you could come up with. What else? Directional or undirected? Yeah, directed versus undirected. Uh, directed like Twitter, undirected like Facebook, or both. There's a relationship going in each way. What else? Directed versus undirected. Remember, an undirected edge is the same as bidirectional. You can have unidirectional and bidirectional. It's all terminology. What else? Weight, directed and undirected. Cyclic versus acyclic whether we can spin around the whole graph back to the starting point or not. Cyclic, acyclic, the inability to do so. What's one other thing we talked about? We talked about it in terms of one other thing we talked, yeah, dense versus sparse. How many relations are there on average per node is a way to think of it. How many friends does each person on average have in that social graph? We'll see that more tomorrow when we do the social problem and we work through the issues that are involved in that and some of the some of the neat things that come up with actually making a small kind of representation of a social network. Dense versus sparse. Are there many relations or is everything related to everything or sparse? Are there 10,000 users but only 100 friends on average per user? So if we can take the problem and not only understand it, but then put it, start thinking of it in terms of these type of words, if we think of it like this, that's going to make it easy for us to do the second thing, and that's build the graph. Now we know what we need. If we can say whether it's weighted or unweighted, if it's weighted, we need to give more descriptions of how it's weighted. Directional versus undirected, uh, we'll know about our relationships. Cyclic versus acyclic, dense versus sparse. Once we know what we need to build, we always need to know what, you know, we always wanna know what we need to build, whether it's a template for a front end site and trying to make something pixel for pixel, or if it's a data structure representation that we're making here in the Python languages we're doing it. So we'll build the graph. And so to solve any graph problem, you're gonna translate it into graph terminology and build the graph. Once we built the graph, say it's been debugged, it's working perfect, what's the last thing we would wanna to do to, to solve any graph problem? If we're gonna do something, a graph is all about relations, so what do we have to do, a general term or the exact term of what we would do one way or the other with that graph once we were done? We describe the graph, then we build it, kind of like in the in the planning stage of polyas, and that's kind of steps two and three all put together there. And then we step four is reiterate, but before we reiterate, after we build the graph, what do we need to do? So we could know what we needed to reiterate over, maybe. I'm looking for a specific word, it starts with a T, or one of the answers could start with a T. Somebody talk, type. Translate the problem into graph terminology, build the graph. What have we been doing with, with the graphs once we built them? Yeah, we gotta traverse it. Whether we're gonna use breadth first or depth first or a combination of the two, whether it's gonna be a search or a straight traversal and we're just performing an operation on each thing, kind of like a for each type, but on each node, yeah, we're gonna traverse it. So the last step is simply traverse the graph. So we're gonna describe the graph, find out what we need. We're gonna build the traverse and build. It's me saying one thing in my, wanting to do one thing and my brain doing the other because I was talking about building it. So you'll tra you're going to define that graph, build that graph and traverse that graph and do what we need to do, whether it's looking for an element or whether it's performing a for each type operation on each node, whether it is finding all the paths, whatever we need to do, finding the relationships between users on a social network. So I have a problem and I'm just going to kind of talk through it and I'm going to share my screen again. I'll be here. And I'm going to paste the problem into the channel to prevent any confusion. So if you give me just a second.
So you can see here, you're going to be given two words, a begin word and an end word in a dictionary's word list. We will think of that dictionary's word list as we have a text file that we will see. So this is going to be a text file with an incredible amount of words in it. So given two words, the begin word and the end word in a dictionary's word list, return the shortest transformation sequence from beginning to end word such that only one letter can be changed at a time. Given one letter can be changed at a time. So you're going to get two words in a dictionary, return the shortest transformation using the words in the dictionary that only changes one letter at a time. Certainly somebody has some questions on that. Each transformed word must exist in the word list. Note that beginning word is not a transformed word. All words have the same length. You'll return none if there is no such transformation sequence. All words only contain lowercase alphabetic characters. You may assume there's no duplicates in the word list. You may assume that begin word and end word are not empty and are not the same. And so it shows a sample down here where you start with hit and you go to cog. So hit becomes hot, one letter change, and now we've got that final letter for cog. Then hot becomes cot. Now we've got the CO. Now the T needs to become a G, so cot becomes cog. Same with sail and boat, the way it works through it. Same with begin word, end word. Anybody have any questions over what we're trying to do here? Do you understand what the goal is here? Any questions, post them in here. You can, everybody vote, but we can. See, Tico is typing. Give a minute for Tico to type. Yeah, people start voting. See, there should be 12 people voting. So if you do have a question, type it, get on the mic, type it in the channel, ask the questions away. We need to be clear on our goal before we proceed past that first step, just like Polly is. So we will turn this into graph terminology once the problem is clear. Seven no or seven votes, five no's, two yeses. The yeses, if you don't want to type in the channel, hopefully you're typing it in the in the poll here so we can answer those. Any questions over how this is working? We have a begin word and an end word. We have to use the words in the text file that we're going to read in like we've been reading text files. Don't think too much into that. We'll work through that the same way we've always worked through them. But the transformation sequence is the transformation like we're talking about right here, where you have hit and cog, and hit becomes hot, cot becomes cot, cot becomes cog. All these words are in the word list, and you're able to transform from hit to cog using words in the list where only one, so I changes to an O, so hit becomes hot. Hot becomes cot, H changes to a C, Cot becomes cog, T changes to a G, and to be able to do that, these words have to be in the list. Ah, okay, the sample answered my question, gotcha. One person has a question. So, do the letters that can change need to be letters also found in the other word? So you're asking, it. Are you allowed to make a change to if there's not a direct path? Like if, if hit can't become hot, 
but could it become something that you're asking? Let me think how to word this. You're asking, can it be a word that does not logically progress one step closer? That's what you're asking. Do the letters that can change need to be letters also found in the other words? So does it mean that we're progressing one step closer to the end word each time? Yes. Did that answer your question? You can type up under the comments in the poll. You can't just start randomly changing the word around to anything that will, remember we've got all these, all these rules. No duplicates, begin word are not empty and not the same. They all contain lowercase alphabetical letters and they're the same length. Correct. So you're saying, can we do hot, hot to hat and then hat progressing along towards cog is that what you're asking hot to hat and then hat making a logical step towards cog you can make that transformation <laughs> okay no just confused gotcha So if we were going to translate this into graph terminology, this is similar to Polya's. See Jawad type and see what Jawad asks. Ah, no, it didn't freeze. I had the, the share paused. I'm sorry about that, but I wasn't doing any coding. What is required for a word to letter to change? Look at that. Look at the example here, just so we're all clear. Sail becomes bail. That is closer to boat. Boat becomes boil. That's B-O, closer to boat. Boil becomes bowl. Now, we added an L here, but we don't have an A, then bowl becomes bolt, and then bolt becomes boat. So what's required for a word to letter to change? You have to be able to start from the first and be able to change to the next in the path by only changing one letter, and you have to find a path that, that you're able to do this on that will lead from the begin word sail to the end word boat, from hit to cog from hungry to happy and it returns none. Partially because they're not the same length. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry if there was some confusion on that, but that's what this step, this highlights, that's what this step of the problem solving is, is until we, we all are on the same page and we, and we realize what the problem is asking, what, whatever that problem may be, whether it is in an interview, whether it's at school, whether it's in the industry, whether it is anything, we need to make sure we understand the problem. So does anybody else have any questions or, or can we move along? Sorry if that wasn't completely clear at first. It's kind of a difficult problem to describe. That's why I cut and pasted it into the channel and I wanted to make sure and go over it because we've got the time. Anybody else? I'll give it about 20 seconds if nothing appears. If anybody has a question, click yes and type or put it in the channel. So yeah, the path can traverse any way long as the rules that we have here are followed. Which means it's not necessarily like we had with hit, hot, caught, cog, where one letter was changing each time when we had the transformation. It can be a longer transformation like this. It can be a transformation that involved 75 words or 750 words, depending on the length of the words and the word bank that we're working with.
Wait, so each iteration, only one letter can change, right? It's only one letter can change from the previous. So like here, sale could change to bail. It can't change to sale, can't change to boil. Only one letter can change each time. The letter doesn't have to be a letter that's in that slot for the final, but you have to have a clear path following that rule to get to the final. This is much like a, a code challenge type of question here. That Does each word need to be like a real word? The word is in a text file. There's a word.txt file sitting on my desktop that, that you could use for this. So the word has to be in the text file. Remember it says you're going to get a dictionary's word list and you're returning the shortest transformation sequence from begin word to end word. One letter changes at a time. Each transform word must exist in the word list. So it's arbitrary. You can put two words in there. You say you know the length of the words in the word list. You can put two words in there. Remember the begin words is not a transformed word. Any more questions? So change one letter, then find in dictionaries word list. Yeah, I think, Yanrong, your last statement or kind of question that you have there, we'll answer as we work through the code. So let's move on to step one. Let's translate the problem. Let's translate the problem into graph terminology. We talk about the shortest path. What do we, what do we think when we, I'm going to kind of feed some things here and, and get some feedback. We, we, we ask for the shortest path. What do we think of when we think of shortest path? The methods that we've worked on, the algorithms that we've implemented, what do we think of when we think of shortest path? Yeah, breadth first search. So we know we're going to be dealing with a breadth first search here or some sort of a variation of it. A transformation sequence. What about a breath first search does that make you think of? Remember a search, we're going to be traversing the graph until we reach that point if we can, but transformation sequence, what is that specifically part of the BFS does it make you think of? A sequence, is that the same maybe as another word we're using up above for the BFS or in the other code that we did? Yeah, path. Nice. Um, a word, what, what part of the word would be represented on the graph? Remember, graphs have different properties, things to them. A word would be what? Think about like, let's see what Carlos is typing. What would a word be on a graph, on our graph that we're making? What would a word be? Yeah, it's the it's it's the um, it's the path, the BFS path, because we're trying to save this transformation, and we can save it as a path. One letter change. This is a little bit more difficult, but what about a graph? Does a one letter change make you think of? No, a change. Remember, we'd be going from one vertex to the next vertex, probably. So, what is it? One letter change make you think of. Adjacent vertices and what are adjacent vertices? Well, they, they, what are vertices connected by? Edges, yeah, that's what I was looking for. But thank you everyone for all the participation today. The more people that participate, the better for the group, the better for the GP, and honestly, the better it is for everybody that participates because you're definitely helping yourself when you do that. So we've translated the problem into graph terminology. We know that the shortest route makes us think of a BFS and the sequence specifically makes us think of that path associated with it. So we're gonna have to obtain that. 
A word is like the vertex, the node on the graph, and a one letter change is simply that edge going from one word to another word that's in that list that we've got. So when we build the graph, we gotta think about what operations are necessary. We had a vertex list earlier. Intuitively, that's gonna be our word list. Instead of having a list of vertexes that we're able to traverse, we have a list of words that we're able to traverse to see if we can find a path that follows these rules that we have. So the vertex list is simply this word list that we'll read in like we've read in other word lists in Python that we'll do here in just a minute. We need to define a function to get all the edges, but we'll come back to this. So if we were going to make this graph and we wanted to do a BFS path to get the shortest path, I'm gonna go ahead and just undo this because we do have a queue that is an underlying data structure and that is something that we'll just have supplied to us. We'll call this find ladders with again word and we're just calling this a ladder for the word. We can say visited equals set the same that we always do because we always have to keep track of our visited. Remember with a graph what is one thing that as we're traversing a graph a rule that we always follow that why we make this set remember that set not having duplicates and that set being in unique implement implementation, it's like an unordered list. But what, why do we always establish a visit? And what's a rule when we traverse a graph, whether we're traversing doing a search or we're just doing a traversal, what's a general rule that why we always make that set? Somebody type. What is a rule of graphs? Okay, I see somebody typing. Oh, okay. Um, what I was asking, why do we need to keep track of the visited like we do in the set? What's a general rule of traversing a graph that mean that, that that's why we need to keep track of the visited in the set? Yeah, so we don't traverse through that vertex again. So the word is not a repeat, exactly. It's exactly what I was looking for. And then we're gonna make a queue. So we'll just use. And remember that in this case, it, it could come up why, why we do not need to have the graph. While we don't need to have the graph. Sorry, I clicked on. Yeah, so that we are doing it so the word is not a repeat. And remember that we do not need the actual graph class in here. because the word is the same as the vertex and the graph class was defining the node that were those vertices. Does that make sense to everybody? Type if that doesn't make sense. So we're gonna make the queue. And we will on queue the beginning word. 
And remember, once again, we have paths, so that's why we have these brackets in here. And we'll do the same while Q dot size greater than zero. We will make a path by DQing the next in line to be DQed. In the DQ, just relying on this implementation of the Q up here. So we're going to DQ. And we will say v equals path and use this Python terminology to grab the last element of the list. Then we'll say if v not in visited, visited.add v like we've been doing. If v equals, what do we see if v equals here? What would we be looking for here instead of that specific value? What are we going to see if? DQ gets, yeah, Carlos, DQ gets the word. Remember that the, that the nodes are a word. And we're transforming from word to word to word, but we're saving the path of the word. So we have, like we had up here, sail to bail to boil to bolt to bowl to bolt to boat. We're saving each of these words in the past. So the DQ is going to grab the last. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, when you pop, it's grabbing the next in line. Remember the queue, first in, first out. First person in line is going to be the first person to be seen, as opposed to the stack where it is last in, first out, like making a stack of plates, and then you start grabbing one after the other. So on line 23, we're going to remember we've made a queue, we've on queued the beginning word, we're using a breadth first search methodology. While the queue is greater than zero, while there's still nodes, in this case words, to be visited, we're going to say path equals, and we're going to DQ that word, that single word, just like we may have had a single value or a long path that we've got, making sure it's not been visited. We grab that last word in the path. If it has not been visited, we add it to the visited and we perform our actions. And the first thing we're gonna do is say, if V equals equals, what would be our, what would be our end game here? If V, what would V equal that would, that would be concerned with? What are we checking for? This is like a search, but it's a different kind of search. Yeah, N word. So if E equals N word, we're just going to return path and make sure I don't make that same mistake as I did earlier. We will then say for neighbor in get neighbors, and we will get those neighbors here in just a second. Remember, that's the question that we had that we didn't answer. We will define a whole nother method for the neighbor. We will say path copy is making a list out of that path or whatever terminology, the dot copy worked for that. And we will say path, copy, append, neighbor. We're having to get all of the neighbors of that. We're gonna be able to look for all the neighbors, the neighbors being every word that's one word apart. Think of it like that. An edge connects those vertices, those words, and the neighbors will be all the words that are one letter apart from the previous Remember our transformation path. Does that make sense? If, if that doesn't make sense, I don't want to make a whole other thing, but somebody type if that does not make sense so we can talk about that.
We have to be able to find all the neighbors. All the neighbors of a word will be that one letter transformation. Every word in that dictionary that's possible that we're going to access that is a one. How do we make sure the end word is on the last array? I'm afraid I don't understand what you're asking. The end word. Remember, this is like a search, and we're looking for the end word, and we doing a breath first traversal, a search. We keep building a path starting with the begin word to see if there's a combination of words that we can go through that follow the rules that we have, making that one letter change that ends at the end word. And remember, each neighbor that we're looking for here, and we're going to define a whole other method for the neighbors. Each method or that method to find the neighbor will let us see each word that is one letter away from the word behind it in the path those rules that we established. Does that make sense? I'm, I still don't exactly understand your question, but maybe did, okay. Yeah, I'm wrong since you asked, does that make sense what I was at? Okay, I, like I said, I really didn't understand how you worded it. I'm sorry about that, but I think I kind of got your point. So we're getting highlighted here, what the heck, where's the get neighbors? And it's because we haven't defined get neighbors yet, so we will get along to that. Did somebody get on the mic to ask something? And remember, we're going to on cue the path copy that we've created. If I can spell right, that we've created up above. We got a cue backing this all up. We've implemented the same type of traversal, but we've made it specific here where we've got a begin word. And our path is a path of words, and we've got to be able to make that path. We got to get neighbors that we're going to work on here. And then that leading vertex, the last thing in the path, we're going to just check and say, hey, have we gotten to this end word? If not, let's keep going or until we get to the end. <laughs> So we need to define a get neighbors function and we'll just kind of define that on the fly and we'll define it up above. And actually the first thing that we're going to do, and I'm even going to do it above here. The first very first thing that we're going to do is we can say word. We're going to make a word set equals to set. Somebody's got their mic on, if you could turn it off. Word set equals to set, and then we'll just say for word in words, and we'll explain where these words are coming for, word set dot add word. Remember, we're gonna lowercase it in case there's some capitals. That's just followed, that word dot lowered is Python syntax. We're adding it to the set, the set being that unordered list that cannot have duplicates. Think of it like an unordered list with no duplicates. There's no L, it doesn't have to have an order. There's no index to it. And then we're just lower casing it. So we have for word and word dot words. And up above this, we can just use our syntax that we've used before. To open the text file, this R is the default value. This is words.txt. Simply, this is accessing the file words.txt. It's sitting in the same directory as the file we're working in. It's sitting on my desktop along with this file. The R doesn't even need to be there because that's the default, but that's defining what we want to do with it. In this case, we are just reading. We're not writing to it or doing any other operations. And we're simply saying we're making words that we're accessing down here with the, and then using this placeholder as we iterate over it. Words is simply going to read and it's going to split at the new line and then we'll close it. Ah, I'm sorry, I didn't, I had clicked to pause the share and so what I was doing while that was paused, I apologize about that. We simply, if you started up here, we're opening our words.txt that's in the same directory as these. 
We're reading it with this R right here is just saying that we're going to read. That's the action that we're going to take on words.txt. We don't need to write or do anything else to it. And then we're just simply saying words equals F dot read dot split at the new line. This is just grabbing each word and assuming a new word after a new line. And then we're closing. Then we're making a set here. And then we're saying for word in words, And then the word set dot add, and we're just lower casing the word to follow one of our rules. Does that all make sense? And then just for a little housekeeping, we can grab this queue because this really should be at the top here. We've got our find ladders and we can put our queue in here that we're going to use in the find ladders. And then we need our get neighbors. So that will be the last thing that we do. And then at the very end, we're just going to open. Why I have this here, but we're going to say. Find ladders between sail and boat and see if that works like we were showing up on our example. Okay. So right here, we will make one more and we will say get, get neighbors, word. Can anybody think about generally, we need to get the neighbors. Remember the neighbors are every word that's in this list. We've got our word list now that we've created up here and we've made a set out of it because there can't be a duplicate. So we make a set, no duplicates perfect for a set. No low, all lowercase, so we make it lowercase. We've iterated through this file that we've manipulated the same way we've done before in these tests that we've talked through. Can anybody think about, we need any neighbor is a word that's one letter away from the previous word. Anybody think about how we're going to do this? First of all, we can just define neighbors. We'll make an empty list. Let me, that's, we got about 20 minutes, so let check the first letter in the word. To check the first letter, maybe what would we want to, what's something we could do to each word to be able to check that first letter, maybe to be able to, if, iterate over it to be able to work with it. What do we generally do with strings when we work with them when we've been coding in the past? No, we, we could alphabetize it, but in this case, remember that the order of the word does matter, so we don't want to sort it if you're meaning, we did the lower if you're talking about, we did the casing, we did the lower already. But we don't want to sort it. But if we were going to sort it, what would we do? What would we have to do to that word first? What do we generally do with words when we have those break down into alphabet? We could just say string word equals list word. And of course, that will return a list of W for element zero, O for element one, R for element two, D for element three. It's a split. So yeah, Tony, right along the, the path that you're talking and you're talking even further down or more complex, but we're just gonna change it into a list. And then what are we probably gonna have to do to each letter? We're probably gonna think iterate over so we can just say a for loop as such for I and range length of string word that we've created here, string word being a list of this word. And then for each I, can anybody think what we would maybe want to do here? Just, just the strategy.
loop through each letter and change it by each letter in alphabet and compare to your list of words one at a time. Exactly what we're looking for. So within get neighbors, I'm actually going to define letters and simply going to make it wrap that around. Letters is simply going to be every letter in the alphabet. So for I, each letter in that word, we could say for letter in letters, once again, accessing this variable and then using the letter as a placeholder. But for letter in letters, we can just make, we'll call it temp word equals list. of string word and temp then we will do here remember we already had our string word and so then we're going to make it then we're going to make a change first we just make a copy of our string word that we have that we're working through letter by letter and we're going to make a temp word and we're just going to make a change here and we're going to say actually temp word i equals letter. So we're going through each word, breaking it down into its individual letters, iterating over that, and then for each letter, changing it to every possibility here. That makes sense. And then we could say the join syntax, we have to create the string, then say join, temp word and that puts us back from being in a list to being in a string puts us in string format right here when we do the join and then we'll say if w is not equal to word so the first thing we're looking for, remember, is if it's actually the word, then we don't want to do this because we've reached our endpoint. Remember, we've taken our, not compared to your list of words. Yeah, so we're taking our word here, and if it's not this actual word, and W N word set, so we're checking, Python syntax is it in here is it a boolean so we're just evaluating this so if it's not the original word and it's a possibility because it's in the word set remember we're having to look at all the possibilities and then compare the possibilities like Carlos says to your list of words so we're making the comparison here and then we'll just use the variable terminology neighbors not a pen the neighbors that we created the W that we made right here. And then outside of all this, we will simply return neighbors, which was this list that we created here. Remember that's looking for each word next to it. I'm gonna make a poll here. We got about 13 minutes left. And then try to run this. Any questions on how this is functioning? How we went through this? Any questions about anything today? Anything from yesterday? I'll make this anonymous. You can get on the mic. You can type in the channel. You can type here. Everybody, please vote. I'm just going to say yes or no. And we'll run this code here quick. All right, everybody fill this out and ask any questions you may have. Here we've got our words that we're accessing, making a set, lowercasing them, our underlying queue that you should be familiar with, getting neighbors. We just defined a variable for all the letters so that we're able to go through and look for the neighbors by changing every word, every letter in that word to every other possible letter in the alphabet. 
and then seeing is that in our word list and if so we need to work over that path because that path is a possibility to reach this end word that we're looking for the path for that we're doing the search for and that's what we did right here iterating over each letter making a temp word changing one letter from up here and then we're just joining it and we're going to check to make sure it's not the word and then if it is in the set we'll append it to neighbors the word set being what we defined up high and then here you're just taking a begin word and an end word and you're doing a breath first search like we talked about so if we save all of this no questions anybody else there should be 12 people answering i got seven answers if you have a question type it i'm going to try to run this can we get a file copy yeah i will drop that in the channel when i drop this i will drop a zip of the words.txt So I can say Python three. And I'm trying to run this. Give it a second to run. And we see right here that when we ran the file, we got sail, bale, boil, bowl, bolt, and boat. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to drop that code. I'm also going to drop the code, the zip for the see Yan Rong is typing. Is that why we learned binary search tree? A this is one application that is close to a binary search tree, but a binary search tree is a general way of organizing. Can you also run print, find ladders, hit cog, just curious. Sure. Um, but back to Yanrong real quick. A binary search tree is a way of organizing any type of data and being able to, using that Binary search is being able to use that divide and conquer mentality on a binary search tree. So remember with a binary search tree, you've got your data and each time you're just saying, is it on this side or is it on that side? Is it on this side? Is it on that side? And you're cutting the amount in half that gives you the, the, the amount of data that you still have to consider. So you get that theoretical login time. 
Whereas for this BST, this breadth first search traversal, you're dealing with a graph uh, or a breadth first traversal or breadth first search, excuse me, I said breadth first search traversal. You're getting this graph and you're having to touch the points on that graph and tra traversal each of the points in a search you're traversing until you find it or you traverse the whole graph and return none. Does that make sense, Yan Rong? They're kind of two different things, even though they're somewhat related. And you wanted me to run. This right here. We'll just take this off and we'll add this. Print find ladders. Hit and hog. Just making everything consistent. We'll save that and I can run that again. So if we run that again, So it went hit, sit, sot, cog. I'm unsure if what was in the example wasn't available there. Or this is just the path that it found there, the first path. That, but you see what it did. But when we went back up, remember it went hit, hot, cot, cog. And this one went hit, sit, cot, cog. I'll drop all of this in the channel. And I will also add the text file. Any more questions, you can add them up top. You can type, I see you. I think the runtime for this one is a lot faster than the last one because the first one had to I think the first one had to run through this operation first. I bet if you run these both right now, let me save this. And then if I run it both again, Speaking of run times, what would the O to N be where N is the length of the word? What would the time complexity be where N is the length of the word? Excuse me. The time complexity where N is the length of the word. What would the time complexity be? Yeah, it's O to the N, exactly. Because each letter you add, you have 26 more possibilities. And as noted, 26 N equals O to the N. Hold on, I'm still letting this one Yan wrong. I'm letting this run again, but then I'm gonna run it a second time. I think part of the reason it takes a while is that this is a much more complex path than this right here. 
I also don't know if it's storing some things into RAM that's letting it run faster if you run it without making any changes, but I think it's simply the fact that it's a much more complex path here. And you got to remember If anyone wants to go ahead and take off, we're right on the hour. I dropped the code. I will drop the um, text file into the channel. I'll also get the video processing. I'll also get, by the end of the day, your videos to watch for tomorrow and your pre-class work for tomorrow. Remember, we'll have GP tomorrow and Thursday. There will be Q&A today, so don't miss that. I would suggest everyone be there. Bring some of the, the couple questions that came up today, the two that I can remember that I kind of passed along to the GP that would be great to ask. Wow, and it's still running. So anybody can step out that wants to step out. And while I'm waiting for this, I'm going to go and grab the... the file that y'all have asked for. And it should be the Word file is uploading right now, so it looks like it's going to take a second to upload. Yeah, so Yan Rong, when you just run it with 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 the hit and the cog, it returns back fast. When you run it, when you add the letter, and you run from sail to boat. And remember, the breath first ends obviously within the file too, as well. That the the way everything is organized, the path is a lot longer with the letters, the words that we do have. Because if you try to run it like this with the sail and the boat then it hangs up for a long time before it gives us an answer like we did earlier. Anybody have any more questions? Nobody has anything, I'll go ahead and let you go. You've got the Word file, you've got all the code from today, the code from yesterday. We've been through all the material that we were supposed to go through. Um, I will post the video and post the links for tomorrow. Everybody keep working. You've got day two in the graphs. Like I stressed before, it's a long, difficult, dense week. So keep up with the material and don't fall behind. 20 minute rule, use the help channels, ask your PM, reach out to me. We're here to help. There's always coverage during lunch with PMs. Anybody have anything else? If not, I'm going to let y'all take off and I'll get everything posted. I thank you for your time and that's all. Thanks, guys. Gals. Yeah,